So remember a few back, a few months back when Joe Rogan got COVID and the media's lying D-bags claimed he took horse pills? Sorry, did I say lying D-bags? I mean, stupid lying D-bags. Can you believe, like, Joe Rogan? Hey, yeah, he's he, he eating eating uh, dewormers. He says he is taking several medications, including a drug meant for deworming livestock. In case you missed it, Rogan said the word ivermectin. Yes, that's the deworming medicine made to kill parasites and farm animals. When you have a horse deworming medication that's discouraged by the government, that actually causes some people in this crazed environment we're in to actually want to try it. That's the upside down world we're in with figures like Joe Rogan. Sorry. <laughs> Horse pills, more like horse <laughs> Of course, ivermectin's been approved for human use for decades, while these dopes OD'd on whatever turns you into a horse's ass. Remember, these are the people who get everything wrong. They can diagnose what Rogan puts in his mouth but missed everything coming out of Chris Cuomo's. It's also ironic that Stelter would be critical of anyone about COVID, given he's a walking risk factor for every medical condition on Earth. He's a Petri dish wearing extra large sweatpants. He is to health problems what horse dung is to flies. He needs to mask up to limit his exposure to Cinnabons. Damn. I mean, whose advice would you rather take? Rogan, who's built like a brick wall, or Stelter, who's built like an unripe avocado? <laughs> so as usual, their ridicule was based on a lie, one they never rescinded. So Rogan called out CNN's very own medical expert. Do you think that that's to, a problem, that your news network it was not, lies? Well, I don't... I don't th Dude. I mean, what did they say? They lied what and they said say? I was taking horse dewormer. Does it bother you that the news network you work for out and out lied? Well, just outright lied about me taking horse dewormer? They, they, they shouldn't have said that. Why did they do that? I don't know. Mm, being the medical expert at CNN is a lot like being the executive chef at a prison. It's a nice title, but you're not going to put it on your Tinder profile. Of course, months later, Joe joined Spotify, and those COVID lies came back. And in a last-ditch effort to stay relevant, musical artists Neil Young and Joni Mitchell threatened to boycott, demanding Spotify dump Rogan. If they were any grouchier, they'd live in a garbage can. Although that might be where Joni Mitchell's lived since the 1970s. But it's weird how the usual defenders of artistic freedom decided to become corporate censors. They went from selling out arenas to just selling out. But if you aren't familiar with Neil Young or Joni Mitchell, here's a clip of their classics. Oh, man, take a look at my life. I'm a lot like you. Don't it always seem to go? Don't know what you got to this <laughs> You know, they're both from Canada, by the way. Must be something in the water up there. And judging by their voices, it's razor blades. <laughs> Spotify shut down the whiny old farts, so the singers removed their catalog from Spotify. How did music fans react? <laughs> of course, during all this, how did we cover it? Roll it, Clyde. Now, the Rogan story has gotten widespread media coverage. Far more coverage than how small the risk COVID poses for young people. And you got places like CNN, jealous that Rogan often has more influence than they do, piling on. They don't like his dangerous ideas about free speech, exercise, and, God forbid, cracking jokes. There's likely no person on Earth who's doing more to dismantle idea segregation than him. The roster of his guests are more diverse than the Olympic opening ceremonies, and they're allowed to speak endlessly about whatever so the listener can decide. It's the antidote to cable TV, where shows rely on the same people who say the same things over and over again. And no wonder CNN hates Rogan. He's widening the universe as they shrink it. I believe I am the true hero. <laughs> I heard Rogan as a bronze bust of me right next to the bong. Here he is just Tuesday on his podcast where he claims Fox and others had his back. Who would have thought that if you look back on the early days, what we used to think of as conservative versus liberal. Liberal was pro-free speech, people were open-minded, non-violent, you know, and people were open to other people's ideas. And the right was like suppressive, you know, the nanny state, you know, condemn certain language, condemn certain behaviors. 
That's not the case today. Yeah. Today, the left has gone so far left. That sounds really familiar. <laughs> Keep going, Joe Rowe. So radical that the right are the ones that are celebrating comedians and celebrating Chappelle. And yeah. They had my back through all the crazy that happened mm -hmm. with me. It was Fox News that had my back. So this is the point I've been making since forever, or at least since Cat turned 40. <laughs> that what you're seeing is the big flip, whereas the left retreats into a woke cocoon of intolerance, the only real defenders of artistic freedom has to be us, which is hard. It's like I don't already have enough to do teaching glass blowing to marginalized communities. But it was a promise we made years ago that we righties must share the risk with liberals who are under attack, even if they hate us. If we defend those who may not care for us, whether it's Rogan or Marr or Chappelle, they may at some point see the value in the mission because sharing risk is all we have in the battle for our freedoms. It's also the right thing to do. And it's something we know firsthand here, having endured the same treatment for decades. No one knows better than us. Boycotts, cancel culture, I've been there. The insults, the name calling, the threats of violence. And that's just what I get from Geraldo. <laughs> so we will happily defend others, even if they may still stubbornly claim to be liberals. And they may hate us, doesn't matter. They need us more than we need them. Because you're gonna see the left split even further into warring factions, in which only one side is really warring and the other side is simply leaving. It's like a spouse divorcing a super crazy partner. Meanwhile, as the left makes humorlessness hysterical, the right loses its scolds and replaces them with fun-loving sickos. We go from Jerry Falwell to this. Which, <laughs> which one would you rather have your kids grow up like? All right, bad example. And not because one's dead and the other one's dead inside. We are now the party of freedom and the party of speech. In fact, we are just the party. Because over there on the other side, it's no party at all. Fun is eroding faster than Joe Biden's frontal lobes. Because we know when you throw away free speech, other freedoms follow. And so does the fun people. So does the fun. And by offering your hand to the people being attacked, they often come around. You can still disagree on many things, but there's one thing you can never abandon, and that's your right to speak and your ability to share it. So you're welcome, Joe. Happy to help. We'll pat ourselves on the back for having yours. Let's welcome tonight's guest. She's so evil. Dante had a circle of hell made just for her. Fox News at night anchor evil Shannon Bream. He's the only cash not accepted by Hunter Biden. <laughs> Former White House National Security Council aide and author of the new children's book, The Plot Against the King, Cash Patel. She's like a kite, colorful, bright, and hanging on by a thread. Fox News contributor, Cat Tip. And when he builds a sand castle at the beach, it's put on the market. My massive sidekick in the NWA World Television Champion, Tyrus. <laughs> Shannon, how are you? Excellent. Great to have you on the show. As always, a pleasure. Are you happy to be here? Pleasure is mine. Uh, it should be. Yeah. So, would you agree that I played the main part in bringing justice to Joe Rogan? Am I the real hero here? Um, if you say so. Yes. <laughs> you are. Um, I want to see you guys do a push-up contest. No, and then I will be able to make a determination. Yeah, but isn't it interesting how Fox... I mean, Fox is anti-cancel culture probably because we know people screw up and we allow for second chances. Yeah. And that's kind of the antidote for everything, right? Yeah, and we all need that. And what interesting conversations. Another thing on any of our shows that you watch, you're going to hear from multiple sides. It's not fun to just get beat over the head with one side and have no exploration of ideas uh, or anything else. Bill Maher is very good at this, too. I mean, you had him up. Somebody that is, I would say, the old-school version of a liberal where you have an open mind, free speech, let's debate ideas, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, when you close it down, it just gets uninteresting. And yeah. I think Joe knows we've got his back. You specifically. Give you credit. Well, you know, um, I, I have everybody's back. Mm -hmm. And sometimes front. Yes, that is true. <laughs> She's learning. Evil Shannon Bream.
Cash, good to see you. Congratulations Thank on the you. children's book. I brought Ooh. you a copy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Shannon gets um, I think you're, I think you're stretching it calling that a book, though. It's over that. 20 pages, that's <laughs> what I, which is, which I mean, is I, your that's, limit. That's not even the but, length of my monologues. Wait, 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 it's got <laughs> colorful pictures in it and stuff. Oh, who, yeah. did you do the artwork? Yeah. Did you do the artwork? Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> <What? laughs> this is a scam. Yeah, Russia you really Gay, yeah. Russia Gay for Kids is not a scam. <laughs> it's Russia Gay for Kids. Our children must be told the truth. You are crazy. It's a bestseller, and Google suppressed it today. Oh, really? They, they actually crushed the entire ad campaign. No way. That's how you become today. even a bigger yeah. bestseller. That's good. That'll help yeah. you. That's They call that the Streisand effect. <laughs> I'll take True. it. True. They're laughing, but that's what they call it. I didn't name it. Anyway, Cash, isn't it interesting, this whole flip? Like, now it's the right? Because I'm, I'm old enough to remember that the right were, was like the Dean Wormer. They were the people yeah. that hated speech and hated comedy. It's completely flipped. And now the, the left is the new moral majority. Do you find that strange, comforting, weird? Will you write a children's book about yeah. it? It's my sequel, and I'm going to put Gandalf the Greg in my neck. <laughs> oh. You were the same height. I think it's what happens in government. That's probably the only thing I can speak to since I spent my life in it. Now I'm mm. trying to make money, but you're not helping. <laughs> yes. Um, but basically what happens is government goes, oh, we're going to do an overcorrection. You know, crime is too high, so let's just bury everybody. Right. And everybody's getting sick, so let's inoculate everybody. Mm -hmm. And the left is doing the exact same thing with the media, and now they don't really have my former boss to sort of knock over the head, so they've lost that bludgeoning pin, and now they're just basically like, well, we, we have to keep going. We can't stop. And that's why you got, you know, old school guys like Bill Maher are, are gone, mm -hmm. and you have Joe Rogan. My only problem with Joe Rogan is he put on the fake CNN Indian doctor, and he could have had this Bollywood Indian doctor oh. go for him. And so I kind of, well, I probably will decline his offer when he offers uh, Oh, well, I had no idea. When you do your push-up contest. It is, it is yeah. true, though. It's like since tr Trump kind of left this Trump-sized hole, right? Or Trump-shaped hole. A little callback to Nirvana. But anyway, um, that they tried to fill with Rogan, and then they tried to fill with Tucker. And, and now they, I think, believe that they're trying to fill it with Elon Musk. They keep like putting. They keep thinking, how are they going to do this? You know, Tyrus. What's interesting? You know, what's interesting about this kind of like conflict between a liberal like uh, uh, Joe Rogan and the left is that they can't pin him down. So that's why it's like he because if you have to adhere to every single point that they believe, or you're out of the club. So if they can't pin you down, like you and I don't agree on like a lot of things, right? Yeah. Well, I mean. You don't agree on my plans for tonight. Yeah. No, example. no, that's why I'm not participating. Um, I'm going to surprise you, though. Yeah, it's impossible. I never give the <laughs> address of where I'm staying. Um, <laughs> it's not even that they they always swing up mm -hmm. because they can't lose. Yeah. You attack an institution like Joe Rogan. You attack an institution like President Trump. What's the worst thing that can happen? You 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 get his attention, and when you get his attention, what happens? You get a lot of attention and you make money. Mm -hmm. And it's the easiest way to make money is to punch at somebody else's success. That's the whole point of cancel culture. It's people who can't go after someone who is. They find the smallest thing and instead of, they don't take him to court. They don't, they don't try to sue him saying that he defamed them or hurt their feelings because they'd be laughed out of court. So they go to the social mob like Twitter or whatever where there's no courts, no laws, no reasoning. And you can cancel somebody and just say, bring up something they did. Like you take Kevin Hart, for example, mm -hmm. something he did, apologize for and never did again. They wanted him to re-apologize right. for. <laughs> and then when he didn't, they got what they wanted. They, well, they, yeah, they, they ruined the economy. I mean, not that the Academy Awards need much more help to be ruined, but they took a great comedian from it. Why? Because they couldn't be there. So that's what they're doing. So going after Musk, going after President Trump, anybody who's done it or made it is a target. So congratulations, King of Night. They're going to come after you next uh. because you're there. And Kat and I will remember all the kind words you said about us <laughs> yes. when you need us supporting you and getting your back. Yeah. <laughs> what can they say about me that I... I haven't already said about myself. That's extremely disgusting. It depends what time of the day they call us. Oh. Yeah. But you know what? It's kind of interesting, though. We talked about this whole thing about sharing the risk. That's the whole point of this. It should be above. And I think as left and right fall apart, that's all that's going to be left is the, that it's going to be sane versus insane people. Yeah, especially because the standards that, you know, they expect people to stick to, nobody can yes. adhere to that, especially because we also have people, I mean, you bring up Kevin Hart, but you have people who've gotten canceled over things they tweeted like 10 years before when they were 
teenagers. Mm -hmm. uh, there was that woman that's supposed to be the editor of Vogue, and then she had some insensitive tweets about Asians that she had already apologized for, but then was asked to re-apologize for, and then she was, you know, never able to start that job. Even though it, you found out one of the women who was women who was leading the charge to cancel her, she had old tweets where yes. she was using the N-word. Yeah. Nobody, everybody makes a mistake at some point, and it's really unfair to, or it's actually just stupid to say that a single comment uh, is a snapshot uh, that uh, can encapsulate an entire person. Mm -hmm. Because we're all a lot more complex than that. Aren't we, though? Mm -hmm. yes. Some well, of us. We're yeah, all like precious everybody. snowflakes. Mm -hmm. What? Well, I mean, I mean, they, they don't all have to be white. I mean, but they're just... Yeah. You know he and I are not white, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It was meant like the we uniqueness of a snowflake, okay? Fine. Yes. What does a creepy snowflake look like? I, don't know. <laughs> I guess that's what he's saying. Right. Like, yeah. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to the break Smaller. now. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.